This is Mustache on Music, and this is Pat Maloney. Hey. How you doing? I'm all right, all right. I'm doing pretty good. Good. I, uh, I'm a little disappointed. My mustache isn't quite as uh, grown I was, in. I was expecting to see like a real deal mustache. I think I got just as much stash as you got going yeah, on. Yeah, if just, you shave the... Just connected to a beard. Yeah, unfortunately. And I'm always curious, does that negate a mustache? Like if it's connected to a beard, is it no longer a mustache? It is no longer a mustache. Oh, unless on. it's like the... like a, Unless you got like a huge giant beard. Right. And then the mustache is also like long too. Okay. So it's there are two separate entities attached together. Yours I is see. like all it's you just, yeah, just feels like you haven't shaved in a week. That's pretty much what it is. <laughs> it's a couple of days, but yeah. 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 Well, so it, I uh, had a one or two incidents with the razor. I had to uh -oh. shave it off. So. Went a little too close. Yeah. Yeah, it happens. Well you get the scissors, you try to get one side all nice and too short, so you have to shorten it the other side. Yep. I've had I've had some times in my life where I had a pretty serious mustache though. Really? And I heard about this interview and I was like, damn, I really wish I still had it, you know? It'd be perfect. It's like going out on Halloween without a costume. Yeah. Well, I saw your uh, your picture on your website and you had a pretty sweet beard. And yeah. It angered me a little though because yeah. I was just like, I don't want to interview this guy's beard, but <laughs> I had a serious beard like a few months ago. It was like down really? here. What made you shave it then? Uh, summer heat, I guess. Okay. I just wanted to you know, trim down a little bit. Just the frustration of the sweat. It gets hot. Okay. It gets hot. Yeah. That's the same thing with the mustache. You, uh, yeah. you get a little sweaty up here. It does. It's a little gross, but yeah. you shower twice a day. It's That's fine. right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're, you're actually releasing an yeah. album. Uh, yeah. Music. Yeah. So, it's a musical album. It's not an album full of mustache talk. Okay, yeah, so yeah. Let's, let's get yeah. to that. Uh -huh. This one is called Repotting. That's right. And your first one was called Root Rot. Correct. Are you like a strange fetish for some sort of agricultural nerd or what? I don't know what it is. Yeah, it was, it's just a good metaphor, I think. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, the, the first one was, I did have a, like a a jungle in my house for a while. Okay. Um, I had all these house plants that I'd had for going on 10 years and they were huge. Like I had leaves on some of them that were like this wide, these big heart-shaped gigantic leaves, these big tropical things. And uh, they were flowering and I don't know, they were just awesome to look at. And I'd sit there with my guitar in my place and, and kind of stare into the plants. And, and that's okay. usually the atmosphere I was writing songs in, so maybe it kind of trickled into that. Okay. But yeah, it was a bit of a hobby. And then uh, Root Rot made sense because I was in London. Um, I, I'm from Ottawa and uh, I'd spent a lot of time here and I uh, didn't really want to live here anymore. Nothing against London, I love it here, but um, I wanted to move. So that was the Root Rot part of it. And then as I was writing Replotting, I was moving. So I had okay. to. Yeah, rented my place out, and I was uh, making the making the, the move to Toronto. Okay, makes so sense. So that's the repotting part of it. And it's kind of a two-part album. Like, it was all written within two years worth of time. Okay. Yeah, so it just made, I don't know, I don't know. It was just kind of a poetic sense, I guess. Is there, a, like, a noticeable difference between, like, the sounds and how you, like, went about the album? Yeah. Like, from this, from repotting to root rot? Yeah, the first one, Root Rot, was um, really informal. Like I didn't, uh, we didn't use a click track. There was, it was all one take. Uh, me playing guitar and singing at the same time. It was all like really live off the floor kind of oh, yeah. um, crafty kind of feel to it, uh, which I really liked. And I wanted to hold on to that for the second one, but I did want to clean things up a little bit. So this one is like I a band rehearsed for for the songs. Okay. Uh, I kind of called in some friends of mine to, to play other instruments and a lot of other singers and stuff like that. So it is a little more formal. We spent a lot more time on it too. Um, it was recorded over the span of six months. Okay. So it, it is a lot more formal sounding. It's a lot cleaner. Yeah, I did more than one take, <laughs> which is sweet. <laughs> Before, it was just like, do it, and that's it, we the, don't care. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I didn't know I was going to do this seriously. I didn't know I was going to take it seriously. I was still in a band. I was playing drums in a band from London here called Two Crown King. And uh, we were still kicking it, and, and I was planning on doing that. And But I just started recording for fun, and then 
um, it started to sound pretty good, so I figured I'd do that. What was that turning point that made you decide to do this full time as focus on your music instead of staying with them? Um, I think it was a long time coming. Yeah, I had just been I'd been writing forever, and uh, I had all the material. Um, I love playing in bands, but it was uh, getting a little complicated. I don't know how to put it. It was um, like a lot of work that, that you can avoid if you do things by yourself. Okay. And I've got my own autonomy now. I can like take opportunities or not. It's all up to me. Like I don't have to ask other people for their schedule or anything. So that's really handy as far as like getting things done. Okay. So it's a quicker build that way. Okay. So. I was reading on like your your like about me section on your website. Probably the most interesting and cool thing was you were supporting a triple X yeah. hypnotist. Yeah. Did you ever get up on stage at all? Uh, no, no. He kept joking that I was gonna have to get up on stage and be a part of the show. I did sit in the audience and try to get hypnotized a couple times, but it didn't work. I don't know why. But uh, yeah, we we've done. Uh, two tours of England so far, and then we're okay. going back in September. We're going to go for another month and a bit, uh, and I'll do another tour with him in January, February. Okay. So like a couple times a year, um, and he's got huge crowds over there. He's been doing it for like oh, really? 20 years, so it's like five, six hundred people every night. Holy crap! Yeah, these wicked shows. Being on tour with a Triple X hypnotist, there's probably some pretty crazy things that you've seen. Are you able to like elaborate yeah. on any of that, or? Um, yeah, one crazy thing that happened, was I was told by the guys I was touring with that I was going to have to do like a hazing ritual thing. Okay. And they're big on that over there. It's not in England. It's it's not like like it is here. Like they still get away with shit that they used to do in the 70s here. Uh, so I was freaking out. I didn't want to do it. Whatever it is. They won't tell me what it is. And we, uh, we're on the way there. I'm like freaking out. And we, we met our the girl who had booked us there. Uh, and she's like, yeah, so I had to do my hazing ritual the other day. And I was like, okay, you gotta tell me what it is. Like, I need to know, because they're, they're telling me I'm gonna have to do this before I go on. So she's like, well, they stripped me naked, threw, covered me in horse manure. It was like an agricultural college. <laughs> covered me in horse manure, put a bag over her head, uh, gave her tape, duct taped a bottle of whiskey in one hand and a phone with like five minutes left on it okay. in the other hand. And then threw her in a cab and drove her to rural Scotland, which is like eight hour drive away, <laughs> left her on the side of the road and said, good luck. That's insane. So my face just like, I, my, like my face dropped. I was like dying inside. I was like, I am not doing anything like that. That's, there's no way I'm doing that. You know, I'm just here to play music. So uh, I get up on stage super nervous about the whole thing. I'm just like sweating, I'm shaking. Like I can't fucking believe this is gonna happen, right? So they were like, uh, yeah, all you gotta do is um, we're gonna put a beer in your hand and just chug the beer and learn this chant. And if everything goes okay, then you're okay. So I just chugged it with my left hand, which is how it goes. Yeah. If you chugged it with your right, I would have had to keep chugging beer until I was done, until I figured it out and used my left. <laughs> and that was it. So that whole day, I'm freaking out for no reason, basically. All I had to do was chug a beer. Oh, wow. So that was pretty good. Was crazy. it a good beer, though? Yeah, it was not bad. Oh, okay. It wasn't bad. <laughs> Your uh, your album, if you had to describe it as a mustache, what type of mustache would it be? Either a style or just like a, like a Tom Selleck mustache or like a certain person that wore a mustache really well. All right, uh, it it wouldn't be so clean cut, like it wouldn't be trimmed and prim and proper. Okay. It'd be kind of rough around the edges. Uh, it'd be wily and thick and uh, uh, yeah, yeah. It'd be it'd be like a. It'd be a thick, unkept uh, mess that looks great on whoever's wearing it. I like that. Those are the best ones. Those big, thick, <laughs> like a caterpillar looking thing. Yeah, 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 something like that. Right. Awesome. So, if anybody wants to check your music out, get to see where you're touring, where can they go to see that? Uh, PatMaloney.ca has got everything on there. Okay. So the tour dates are always up to date on that. Um, and Facebook, Twitter, that kind of thing. I'm I'm underscore Pat Maloney. Okay. On Twitter and Instagram, it's another good way to find out. But yeah, my website's the best way to go. PatMaloney.ca. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Right on. Thank you. Thank you. This was Mustache on Music on Pat Maloney. <laughs> <laughs>